Hi, my name is Wala Hanawi. I'm a dentist, specialist in root canal treatment. I'm a wife, a mom, and I share my journey uh, with my husband and my baby on social media platforms as the Hanawi family. So basically, you introduced <laughs> us and no part for me. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Okay. If you want to have something to say. I have nothing to say. Like, Ma, she said. No, I introduced myself. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say, um, you're going to say the part of no, no, but like, I love journey, what okay? she says. Ali Wala, what's your money up to these days? Wow, well, straight to the point. Straight right? to the point. <laughs> it's, I should ask my wife. No, you're still. <laughs> Does she manage the accounts in the household? She manages yes. the spending in the household. Ah, uh, does she what have a budget? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a budget on the spending? 100%. Okay, how do you guys set the budget? The, I mean like 100%. Every, uh, what's the budget? It's 100% for her. Okay. That's do you allow amazing. him to spend from the budget? Yes, sure, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm curious because, I mean, financial management for a couple can be a very taboo topic to talk about. Because, yeah. you know, families don't want to reveal how they manage their household. So if you guys don't mind sharing, what is the process of discussing, hey, this is our income, what should the spending be, how do we budget, how do we save, what does that look like in your household? Uh, this topic is a taboo. Especially that the conventional way of thinking is the man brings in the money of the house and then he gives to his wife, kids, whatever. Today, everything's changing. Today, she's working. She's an entrepreneur. <laughs> or we're taking the road to being entrepreneurs. She's a dentist. And um, now it's, it's changing in a way that she's, I'm bringing in, like there's two streams of income, let's say. Mm -hmm. My stream of income, her right. stream of income. And then they combine into one. And that one stream of income is equally uh, strategized, analyzed, and studied on how to spend it and how to invest it together as a team. But let's be honest, <laughs> he's the one who, um, who taught me how to save, how to spend, and where to, to spend our money, what to get, what not to get. He's the one. <laughs> I mean, I usually... I'm assuming even if he's the one to tell you, hey, this is yeah. how, what I know, this is how we should do it. There is a process of agreeing as a couple, of course. correct? Yeah, exactly. Now, how does the money come into your household? I'm curious. Do you each have your own individual accounts? That's something taboo. Some couples think, yeah, you know, I own my own account or my own name. Other couples, the way they do it is they have one account jointly that they own and they really collectively own everything. How's it done in your household? We have three accounts. Mine, his account, and you have a joint account as well. And how does your income flow into this? Um, the income that comes from my, uh, my job, it, it goes to my account. And <laughs> same for Ali. And the Correction. Correct what? it. Say it, say it more. <laughs> no. like, talk about it more. Like, the income that comes from my account goes to her. <laughs> and then she gives me whatever, like... I deserve. So when Wala has an account, yeah. all the income, uh, basically payroll, goes exactly. in Wala's account. No! <laughs> it goes to you. you it goes to you. me, okay, sometimes, but it, it goes to your account and then you give me the Everything. money. Some Not sometimes. I guess. Okay, <laughs> before the money flows out, yeah. do you guys have a process of knowing what the plan is? So do you guys say, okay, here's the plan for the month. And accordingly, this is what goes out and goes where and all that kind of outbound processes. Okay, so basically it's all about budgeting with us at home. Um, and even though she tells me like it's all about me and she's learning from me and everything, but she's the source, actually. She gave me this inspiration to learn about budgeting, about um, how to manage our money. So back to the question, when our multiple streams of income come to our household, uh, we budget like the necessities, uh, the fixed costs, the fixed expenses that we have. And then we, once we finish from this, we have another amount of money that is there at our household. And we structure and we strategize. What do we need to do? Uh, what's to spend for us? Leisure spend, uh, spending. What's uh, investing? What are we going to invest? And what are we going to save from that amount? Mm. Now, traditionally, and you alluded to this earlier, Ali, that you mentioned that traditionally 
men make the income, they're the breadwinners, they bring the money home, and then they accordingly spend it. Is this a conversation you guys had to come to an agreement that both your money is the household money? Or is it, do you think, implied with our generation and younger in the Middle East? In our, in our case, it was clear. You know, my money is his money, and this money is my money, and it comes we natural. both... Yeah, it comes natural. Right. Interesting. So just, to paint, yeah. so just to paint a picture for everyone, you all grew up in Lebanon, correct? Correct. So that may not be the same for all parts of the Gulf. Defin- sorry, for all parts of the Middle East. Definitely when you think of the Gulf and Gulf countries, even with our generation, it's still very common to find the man say, oh, but the tradition is I take care of the household, your money is your money. This is why I was actually asking, how is it done in Lebanon? Now, aside from each of your day jobs, you collectively are insta famous. So <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious. Does your 400 ish K following Instagram yeah. account generate an income for your household? Yes, it does. And how much of your, what percentage of your month- monthly income? is that the reason i'm asking is because i feel like these days everyone wants to be insta famous twitter famous youtube famous so realistically can someone or a couple in this case have a viable income by being insta famous at the beginning no and the goal was never to it started sorry it started by joke we were having fun on tiktok we were shooting videos uh, we were at home uh, during uh, quarantine so it it was not our goal to uh, grow this um, this account and become insta famous or tiktok famous whatever just to um, or make money even. to make money that's mm-hmm. what I want that to say that was never the goal it was just to have fun and then once I re- still remember the first comments that we used to get that um, you, you guys give us a lot of positivity and we love your content. And uh, the only thing that's keeping us happy in this in this quarantine or in this isolation is is your content. So I still remember these comments. Yeah, they're very nice comments actually yeah. to know that you're exactly. entertaining someone else exactly. in a difficult period like a lockdown. After that, um, the the main goal or the main drive was never to become an influencer uh, or a con. Uh, it was more of a content creator. Okay. It was never an influencer or never to make money out of it. I get what you mean. And it must be very genuine content because that's how you genuinely are, genuinely are as a couple, exactly. correct? Now, yes. at, at what point did you guys realize, oh, wow, our content is so popular, we can monetize this? Someone uh, contacted us if we're interested to do a, I'm not going to say the name, <laughs> a, a campaign for um, hand soap. soap. Yeah, hand soap. We were like, oh, no, what? No way we can make money out of this. No, we were shocked. No, especially that it was for fun. And um, then there's an agency that contacted us also, and they, they asked us if we are interested to sign with them. So we started to think that, oh, we can grow a business out of this. Exactly. And um, at this time, we started to think business-wise, if you want. But this is whilst you both still had your own individual full-time jobs, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Did the thought cross your mind that one of you would give up working full-time to manage your new influencer potential as a full-time job? Yes. It's always there. <laughs> the thought is always there. And here we are. Okay. Here we are in what's Dubai. What's stopping you? Uh, what's stopping me from what? Saying, okay, this is our influencer potential. Let's go do this full-time. Um... Scaling, scaling it. And Why is scaling like, it hard? Um, it takes time. It takes time. It's a lot of time and effort. And and, and uh, it's not something easy. Like, it's not just like, yeah, put a camera and just film yourself. Uh, but I mean, if it was easy, everyone would do it, right? Exactly. So do you believe that it is something that can be a full-time income for someone? I'm working on it. Actually, we, we okay. are. The correct term is <laughs> we are working on it. Okay, so until you reach there. Right now, what percentage of your income does it contribute when it comes to your monthly household income, let's say? No, I'm not working. When we moved to Dubai, I'm still not working. So we're counting, if you want, on 
this amount yes that is coming from social media and on Ali's job <laughs> <laughs> so Ali Wala you guys are newly parents right yeah. yes what's that like of <laughs> you can and see from under our eyes no. yeah like Like, I'm gonna talk about the the beautiful side of this. It is <laughs> all beautiful. It's positive. Okay, the what point. are what is the beauty of motherhood? It's the most uh, amazing feeling you can ever have. Honestly, the the second I I I held Abudi in my hands was the most uh, beautiful moment in my whole life. I'm gonna still remember this moment until. <laughs> Until I uh, I become a teta. <laughs> a teta means a grandmother. A grandmother. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make so you want to have more children? Of course. Like I want to relive this feeling. Yeah. Do you feel the same? Of course. Okay. Of course. Now even when Abud Abdul Abudi. What's his name? Uh, Abdul Muttalib. Okay. Abudi for sure. <laughs> <Okay>, exactly. <laughs> So, now, when it comes to managing the financials of having a child, because obviously that's a whole other person <laughs> yeah. you need to account for, plus plus some expenses, how do you go about planning for that and managing that as a married couple? This is the conversation we were having yesterday. Like, even though I'm sorry, we're jumping from subject oh, no. to subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, even though I come from a okay financial background, not family wise, but like uh, industry wise, it was my job for the past 12 years. But I was never. taught even in university even though i studied banking and finance as well i was never taught how to really invest i was taught how to be an employee in the investment field and as these are two very different uh topics uh, so how did you learn how to invest challenge myself get out of my comfort zone uh and it, she was the motivation it was all her i remember like the second i was i still remember until today the second we got married Uh, we were in the car, my mom, uh, Wala, uh, my mom, Wala, me and Wala, and I was looking outside and I felt like everything changed. I felt like uh, I re- it, it hit me, like the idea of leaving your comfort zone, my, your exactly, house. my house, my parents, uh, between brackets, my comfort zone, my real comfort mm. zone into something where it's all on me, on my shoulders. It's I'm responsible for everything. Once we got into the house, me and Wala. Uh, she gave me this inspiration without even her knowing, but she taught me how to really think outside the box, how to manage our household, how to budget, uh, really understand what investing is. And it's not just buying stocks or... Investing in money. Yeah. Exactly. Investing, it's not about money, it's about time. And this is... Energy. Everything you do is an investment, basically. And uh, like when I first ask you, Like what first comes to your mind when I say investment, or the, even these days crypto? I'm not gonna lie. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. all, all, all of us actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But even for everyone watching, like when I say investment, what the what's the first thing that comes to your mind? And if your answer was like stocks, financial securities, crypto, NFTs, then this is just a small fraction of what really investment is. When in fact is when. Like these, the, your ROI is basically money. Hmm. When investment should be, and that's my opinion, that's not like a golden rule. Like investment is relative to each and every single person. It's not a constant. So investment to me, in my opinion, is your ROI should be happiness. Even though that's like money doesn't make you happy or whatever. I know it, it does. does. <laughs> it does. I'm not going to lie. But... Is it the ultimate goal of happiness? So I find it interesting that Ali, you think Wala was your muse to 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 save and invest, and Wala, you think Ali taught you to save and invest. Really, as an outsider, I see that you guys inspired each other to take yes. care of your financial well-being as a couple, and probably that that trigger. So that moment you referenced Ali about being in the car with Wala and your mom was probably like. like a turning point. And often with a lot of people, it's until they become the man or the woman of their own household, i.e. when they move out, whether they're married or not, that they then kind of wake up and say, oh, I'm responsible for my own financial well-being. I need to invest. I need to save for the future and whatnot. And I'm curious, when it comes to the little one in the picture, how do you guys decide 
how to budget for the little one. Because I see some parents, some, some of my friends put no budget, they go crazy. They say, oh my God, I will give my baby everything it deserves. And things can get really expensive in the UAE. Schools are really yeah. expensive, True. nannies, nurseries, the like. So how do you go about financially budgeting for a baby? We have an agreement also. Yes. I'm going to give my, my, my baby whatever he wants, but to a certain limit. And I'm not going to be... Um, no, I'm not going to buy him things that he doesn't need or just for buying or bring him uh, this toy or this, uh, I don't know, this uh, a high brand uh, t-shirt just to make myself happy, you know. We have an agreement on this. We, we have to, uh, to make him feel safe, happy, but not, um, you know, not over uh, overspend over mm -hmm. on things that are not uh, essentials for him. Essential. So things yeah. things that at the moment while he's sorry, how old is he? Ten months. Yeah. Ten months old. So he cannot yet say, yeah. "Mommy, I want." "Daddy, I want." Yeah. So you are right now as parents deciding what he needs and what he doesn't. Yes. What about when he starts to talk and sees his friends having? you know, expensive games and toys and holidays, and they say, mommy, daddy, I want. Do you have a plan for how you're going to manage that? <laughs> Sorry, looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Should I answer? Okay. okay. Yes, so basically, uh, this goes back to, no matter how much planning we do, let me put a small disclaimer. <laughs> no matter how much we plan, uh, we never, we can never get it 100%. Uh, no matter how much we we put like yeah I'm, I want my son to be like that like that like that like that or yeah, but we gonna... can decide what to get him what and what not to get him and we have no, of to course. we have to teach him that mm. even if your friend has this uh, fancy thing it's not it doesn't mean that you should have it so basically it's it all goes back to uh, the book that we read it goes back to rich dad which poor book dad. okay so one of our other guests actually mentioned that book as well every financial person <laughs> like mentions that book it's <laughs> so i'll tell you something funny about that book okay. I, I i read my, my dad got me the book when i was a teenager and i read it i didn't get it okay um i actually reread it during lockdown so just That's a couple of years ago <laughs> okay and i was like wow now this makes sense because I'm older and I have the ability to kind of comprehend the entire concept of saving money and accruing and, you know, generating wealth that way. And it finally hit home. Uh, but that being said, what do you guys invest your money in as a couple in order to not just kind of save and have cash in the bank for a rainy day, but to also grow your wealth? Honestly, I, I had zero <laughs> knowledge about investing and finance and so he started to teach me everything especially now we hear a lot about crypto nfts and the stock market so it's his thing so ali comes up with a plan and he says well uh, here's what yes. i think do i have your buy-in is, is, is that the process and then you say yes or no and then he hits play no. no, no, not okay. like that. But I, I give him my, my opinion, if, even if I'm not uh, expert, uh, an expert in uh, finance or investing. But uh, we share everything. And uh, actually, I give her like the intake. And uh, as much as possible, if she understands it, we go for it. Yeah. If she doesn't. Okay. Uh, I encourage him as well in it. Even though it might be that. profitable or whatever it is, if she doesn't understand and or grasp truly what it is, we don't go you for You don't it. go for it. What are some examples of things you just find so difficult to comprehend as someone who doesn't come from an educational background in finance and banking? Um, cryptocurrency and uh, the metaverse now. Web3. Huh? Basically Web3. Well, I was just going to say, I can't get my head around Web3. <laughs> I, I get crypto. I get the metaverse, but I don't get okay. what three. <laughs> and um, NFTs now, NFTs, NFTs. But I have a little bit of knowledge now. Five percent, maybe. And um, Ali, how do you help Willa? Kind of, how, what resources do you give her to help her if you feel like additional resources are required? Uh, financially or yeah or like let's say Ali just can't explain it to you does okay. he refer you to a particular TV show or podcast yeah. or YouTube channel YouTube of okay. course yeah like this is this is my thing like I'm not I love my dad and I love my family and I owe them everything but he learned this from YouTube, YouTube. like my father was the poor dad 
men mentally in the way he used to think and this is the first time i say this oh my God. and again i love my dad but i'm not bashing him or anything and i'm, I'm because you asked me a question about how I, i'm gonna what i'm gonna give abudi like when my son asked me like baba why does this person have a ferrari i want one or i want these shoes and i want the, this and that it. so hmm. I'm, it's, it's kind of this but i want him to understand what does owning give to you like from a from a that from a business and investment point of view so back to this conversation like my father was the poor dad and i hate to say oh, it the poor dad mentality, mentality. Like exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and youtube to me was my rich dad i didn't have a mentor and nobody taught me my youtube too, by the way in, it, in his mentality they all were the poor dad the mentality poor dad. Yeah. i do think that that is actually the majority of the population exactly. because not everyone i think it requires a very enterprising mindset and an entrepreneurial spirit yeah. to actually go and be rich dad. Exactly. Because then you are leveraging and exactly. not everyone kind of understands that con concept. The comfort the comfort is, I have a nine to five job, I have this income and I save and that's what's gonna get me and my family by. Exactly, exactly. So YouTube to me is my rich dad and uh, whatever I learned from YouTube, I always throw at Wala, yeah. everything. So this is the information. Uh, let's let's debate about it. Let's challenge ourselves and learn about it. Interesting. So that's the intake. Great. Guys, I do hope that this also being on YouTube does provide some insights Hopefully. on how Hopefully. young Arab couples these days are managing their money as a household. And thank you very much for being on the show. Thank, thank you for you, having Shanine. us. Thank you.